There's a lot of scary stuff that happens when a website gets hacked. Comment below with your passwords. <laughs> but if you really want to stay protected in today's world, like mm -hmm. that is absolutely crucial. Welcome to The Journey. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top security tips to build a trusted website. All right, Neely, what do you suggest for small business owners to get a trusted website? How can they go about that? Yeah, and there are so many different ways to, to do that. And we're gonna go over that in this video. But I think the number one thing that's really top of mind with a lot of small business owners mm -hmm. is making sure their site's secure and, and getting rid of that warning at the top with an SSL. Now, an SSL, what it does, instead of when you type in your password on a site, Emma mm -hmm. wants pizza, exclamation. So don't share that at home. Um, <laughs> so instead of sending that over the internet and plain text for anyone to read, the SSL gobbledygooks it up so that any, if anyone were to catch that, it just looks like nonsense, like the word gobbledygook, and that's a technical term. Yeah. Right, and then the SSL is also gonna help boost your SEO ranking since Google really likes secure websites, which is super helpful, and it's gonna get rid of that not secure warning. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that at the top of some browsers? Yeah, I can't say I've always listened to it, but after but, this I will. Right, for most people- And that, I'll change my password. That, that don't understand like more technical aspects of the internet, they see that not secure warning, and they bounce. They're like, whoa, this site's not safe, I'm out. Yeah. I, I quit, I'm out, right? I'm naive. <laughs> so that's coming to my, my first tip for you is to add an SSL and that could be, there are some free providers out there, there's some pay that have a little bit of extra features to them. Uh, just go on Google and, and search SSL. All right, Neely, you already know I have a business, Coffee and Kickflips, and you've mentioned things about security and malware, but what is that? How do I go about that? Why? Yeah, so another way we can protect your website is to add a malware scanner. Now, just like computers get viruses, your website can get a virus or malware on it too. And it helps to stay protected because there's a lot of scary stuff that happens when a website gets hacked. It's not just a, a random thing. They'll redirect your visitors to some pretty bad sites. Like I was talking to a small business owner and she wrote children's books and she had interactive books on her website and her website got hacked and it got oh. redirected to not so great things. And they're sending little Timmy, who thought they were gonna read a book to some pretty questionable sites. Mm -hmm. And that just hurts a brand and it's hard to come back from. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you're protected with that malware scanner. So if anything were to happen, you're protected. And you can go one step further with a firewall. I know so you, firewall, that's stronger than malware. Yes, malware you can think of, like someone just broke into your house, now you need to get everything cleaned up. That's okay. what that malware scanner is gonna do. The Got firewall, it. it's gonna make sure they don't get in your house in the first place. Yeah, okay. Which, which is super helpful. It's it's something that it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but if you really wanna stay protected in today's world, like mm -hmm. that is absolutely crucial. So thinking about this, I've been fortunate so far with copying and kickflips, but my fears of this happening is because my friend's site, uh, he sells grip tape for skateboards, it actually was hacked. And the mess and the time and the money it took to get his brand back, the website up and running perfectly, took a lot took a lot out of him too. So I can see why you wanna look at the different variances of security, and then I'd just go all the way. Right, <laughs> right? and that could have potentially been avoided, right? Your friend right. had to rebuild everything and put all this time and effort back into mm -hmm. doing just damage control. And the yeah. one way you can basically avoid that is to have some sort of backup solution on your website. Now, I would recommend having like a 30 day or a 60 day just rolling backup. So if anything were to happen, it's like snapping your fingers and poof, your site is back. And all that, 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 all that effort and work that he put it's into like that- It's like magic. It, it's, it's fixed. It's like nothing ever happened. All right, now I want you to be honest with all of us. Do you have a doc online that has all of your password information? I do actually, because I don't want to forget them. Very organized. No. What do you mean? That is so unsecure. What happens if anyone were to get access to that doc? Oh, I see where you're going with now this. Now they're in everything. <laughs> your bank account, your pizza accounts, all those things, right? Got so it. you okay. don't want to have that sensitive information, no matter what it is, whether it's your passwords or credit card information or just stuff about you that you don't want anyone to know about, right? You want to make sure that's offline in a secure place and 
try to remember it. There's some password vaults that can potentially help you out with that. So you don't have to have your passwords just there. Yeah. And should I have a different password for different things? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You shouldn't use the same password on one place as you do everywhere else. Because okay. if a website you use gets hacked, they have your password, they now have your password to everything, yeah. all the things, right? Yeah, I have a lot of work to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to kind of piggyback on that, mm -hmm. uh, you wanna make sure that you're not sharing your passwords with anyone, even if you they're your most trusted advisors. What about like my manager though? Mm, probably not them too. Okay. I've ran into a lot of experiences where a company owner gives their employee their password information and then the employee doesn't work for that company anymore mm. and they've done some damage. So you wanna be safe and cautious about your passwords because they're yours, right? Right. Okay, so I hear you on not having my passwords all in one place, also not having the same password being used for all my accounts. Next question, how often should I be changing my password? Um, kind of often. I would probably recommend every three months or so to keep it, it fresh. I know it's a lot of work. We have a lot of passwords and logins to all these, these different sites. Mm -hmm. um, but Google does a really good job with their browser of saving your passwords. So you don't always have to remember them. There's the one kick logins with like Apple login now and Google logins and Facebook logins to help you better secure your, your information. And that mm -hmm. way you don't have to remember just a ton of passwords. Yeah. And now another thing we need to think about is your Wi-Fi situation. You have an unsecured or secured Wi-Fi. Uh, how do you know? Do you have to use a login a password to get into your Wi-Fi? Yes, absolutely. Because we didn't want the neighbors to be just. You don't want them stealing your yeah. Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. Get your own Wi-Fi. Cool. So you want to make sure you're on a secured network, especially in your own home. Put a super, super, super complicated password on your Wi-Fi to make sure you're protected. Mm -hmm. And now I know a lot of us, like ourselves included, like going to local coffee shops yes. and connecting to the Wi-Fi there. And that's an unsecured network. So if you type in your passwords on that network, it gets sent over. And if anyone's just listening in and peeking in on, on that network, they could potentially see your stuff. Okay, so I probably shouldn't be checking my bank account when I'm at a coffee shop. Probably not. So if, <laughs> if you absolutely have to, for whatever reason, you can get set up with like a VPN from any provider, just mm. Google VPN provider. And that's basically gonna set up an encrypted connection to their server to help you protect your information yep. if you're on those unsecured locations. All right, so that's all we have for you on our top security tips to build a trusted website. Be sure to comment below. Tell us the favorite thing you learned. Also, like and share this video because I'm sure a lot of your local heroes and friends have similar questions. And subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell so you'll be the first to know when we have another video coming out. This is The Journey.